Hello and welcome to another Hi-Fi Revival. So today on the kitchen counter, we have a Sony Stereo Tape Quarter Model TC560D. This I got sold as parts only, uh, and I got it for a steal of a deal, $20 for this thing. Uh, and this is my first ever open reel to reel t uh, tape player. I've never, I've never gotten one of these before. I've never even seen one until now. Uh, and it is a beast. It is pretty big, but it also weighs, I think, 30 pounds. It is a monster. And here on the IO, we can see on the top, it has a really weird plug. And it did not come with the cable. So that, ca that, that plug has an AC input on the top two uh, pins and then DC 12 volts on the bottom two pins. Um, and so we'll have to figure out something about that because I have no way to power this thing currently. So taking off the uh, tape cover, taking off this knob, it's uh, this. <laughs> This knob is solid metal. I mean, this, this stuff just doesn't exist anymore. That is a solid piece of cast metal. And a beautiful sliding drawer to reveal the recording controls. So, gotta take all the knobs off for getting to get the uh, faceplate off this. And now it's just uh, four screws. Uh, and that's all it takes to uh, to get it undone. I later learned you didn't have to undo these bottom two uh, screws for each of those wheels or circles, whatever you call them. Um, you just need to unscrew the top one. So just a bit of prying, trying to get it to move. There we go, and what a beauty this thing is. There are so many mechanical linkages uh, and springs and sliding surfaces, and uh, we'll see more of that in a bit. So to get the uh, wooden, the actual fully wooden box off of this, got to take all the feet off, and then just two, two of these big screws on the top of the machine. It's still coming. Oh, oh, there we go. Don't worry, I won't make you suffer through taking out the other one throughout <laughs> the whole time. And yeah, this other one was uh, just full of junk or something. Overall, the machine's not too filthy. Definitely needs some cleaning, um, but I've, I've definitely seen filthier before. Uh, just otherwise, just kind of general surface crime it's not i mean considering this thing i think it's 1968 was when this was first manufactured so that's uh, that's not bad and the next one out so now the uh wooden case can get removed and yeah as you can see this the there's no plastic on this the the entirety of this is uh metal and yeah, those are those 12-volt uh, DC plugs. And so uh, I had the idea to just solder on a little barrel jack. Uh, I have tons of these little 12-volt power supplies, so I can just put a new plug on it. So solder that on, and then should be able to see if this thing powers on. Beautiful, beautiful solder right there. Definitely didn't have to redo that at all. So we got the plug on it now, so let's plug it in. And 
we have life. So it seems to run just fine. So got it switched on and got the tape. So that's uh, that's detecting if there's any tape in the machine. So when you would run out, that would uh, open up and then it would turn off the machine. So you're not just spinning it uh, with loose tape flying everywhere. And this, again, just a beautiful machinery. Just it's everything is mechanical linkages and it just stuff stuff does not exist like this anymore um i can't i can't even imagine trying to design something like this and so you can see i got got new belts for it so start disassembling this further because those belts were pretty loose it uh in some of my testing it it ran actually fine but it uh it struggled on rewinding the tape especially when there was a full tape on the left reel it, it just it would stall out so definitely need some new tapes or new belts so pretty simple actually to take uh to take this machine apart just three of these main screws holding down this uh i guess i don't know what you'd call this it has the the head and all the pinch rollers and stuff on it uh, and then we need to take this break out of the way. So I'm gonna first remove the uh, this switch, and then we can remove the break underneath. And then we should be able to get the uh, whole machine out for the big uh, big cast metal uh, flywheels out. So got an e-clip to remove. So gotta love taking these out. And uh, part of my fingers, but this is not easy to film. And of course, it just disappears. <laughs> Don't worry, I did. I did find it deep, deep in the machine. So yeah, now this uh, little cork, I think that's cork break, can be uh, removed. And I should be able to get the flywheels out after removing this uh, linkage on the left. A little bit of fiddling. Don't want to bend that uh, delicate arm. And turns out I need to fully remove this brake. I was a little hesitant to do that because that spring is still attached. Um, I don't think you can see it happen, but it does eventually just fly off, but I, I get it back. And yeah, belt just kind of falls off. It's pretty loose, pretty loose, the uh, main drive belt. And now these circular belts round belts that are powering each of the reels. Got to fish these off. Um, I later learned that these main flywheels come off actually fairly easily. Uh, and that would have been a lot better way because I, I cut out a lot of fiddling to try to get these belts uh, uh, out from underneath it without taking it apart further. And then basically just the yeah, so they, they pop off. <laughs> so I uh, could have done that from the start. So I'm doing the same thing on the uh, right side. It's actually a lot, a lot easier to, uh, for whatever reason, to take it off there. And then got to put the main belt on. Now, I probably should have looked at what I had just recorded. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to put the belt on. And uh, yeah, I, I do not put this on correctly the first time. I loop it down and around. I thought that was like a tensioner pulley thing in the middle. It definitely is not. Um, but yeah, just trying to <laughs> figure out how this belt goes on and this was this was pretty tricky to actually get this put on because 
the belt would fall off whenever you flip the machine over, so you have to keep tension on it the entire time. Um, yeah, it fell off there, but enough fiddling, and eventually, I eventually got it on incorrectly. Uh, but I don't figure that out until quite a bit later. So, reattaching the pulleys uh, for the reels, the belts for the reels. And you can see just spinning the the motor, everything spins correctly, and it's all spinning in the, the right direction. Um, yeah, so you can see the spring fell off eventually, so got to get this little E-clip back on. Not too bad getting them on, it's just it's getting them off because they fly somewhere. So I got that uh, spring back on, and we just have to get this uh, switch back on, which was uh, pretty brutal. This... <laughs> it took it took me so long to get this spring back on. Oh no, not there. Maybe this time. Nope. <laughs> this time. Oh nope. Okay, it's on. <laughs> so now we're getting this uh, arm back on. So this is part of the pause mechanism. I guess you would call it. They call it uh, insta stop. Uh, but it's a, it's a latching pause mechanism, so and get some Loctite on it and spill it everywhere, as, as always. You can see it has like an older form of Loctite uh, on those screws previously, so I just put some on it as well. And yes, had to clean the had to clean the uh, Loctite off the pulley. Luckily, none got onto the uh, belt. Um, I, mean, I don't know what that would be necessarily a terrible thing for a belt, but it probably would be good. Getting the screws back on. The mechanism seems to be working fine. No, uh, nothing catching. And we can get these uh, wheels back on. Not sure. So, got it plugged in. Let's get it on. And terrible noise. Something, something's not right. Something's scraping. Seems to be that left flywheel. And you can see it's it's loose. So that's the one that fell out or like was tore out when I was trying to get the belt in. And I jammed it back up, but it, it didn't catch. And you can see there's a little gap up there. Uh, and also you can see there's a little set screw there. And I did not realize that until uh, when I was investigating the scraping noise. So it definitely would have been easier to take those set screws off and remove the entire wheel and then put the pulleys on. So had to loosen it put it up and then tightened it, got it fixed. Now you can still hear a little scraping noise. Um, it's more noticeable in real life than in the video. And that's because the pulley was not wrong. So if you notice that belt doesn't go over the top of that left wheel, it now goes under it, which is what it's supposed to do. So I had to just undo everything I had done and re-put that pulley on the correct way. So yeah, now I'm going to probably commit sacrilege and drill a hole into this machine. So that barrel jack, I desoldered it because I'm just going to add it to the machine itself. There, I, I cannot find that power cord. I looked everywhere for it. So I'm just going to drill a hole in this little blank spot. I mean, it's perfect. It's, it's the perfect size for it. There's nothing by it. Uh, and I'll just put the 12 volt DC barrel jack in there and I'll wire it into the machine. So I got it lined up with the other pieces of IO so that it looks right. I'm just trying to center the center of the drill right now. So got it uh, centered up and yeah, perfect. Didn't, didn't destroy anything inside the machine somehow <laughs> slamming the drill bit in into it. And it probably would have been smart to just remove this panel from the machine. I didn't see an easy way to do that. Um, so I'm just I put the safety paper towel underneath to catch to catch any metal filings and to stop the drill from destroying the components inside and then yeah, I got some magnet and paper towel to clean up the clean up the metal scraps. It's a good trick. 
Uh, just just using progressively bigger drill bits to work my way up to the correct size. So this should be the uh, last one, and the barrel jack will fit after this. It's funny, the uh, the electric motor was kind of underneath this, near the bottom of the machine, uh, and that ended up covered in metal filings sticking to the permanent magnets in it. Uh, but I did manage to get it cleaned up, um, and I think it turned out pretty okay. Uh, it's, the hole's not the cleanest looking hole, but the, the barrel jack has a bit of a lip on it that can cover it up, and... Uh, and perfect fit. And yeah, look at that. Looks factory. Looks great. Yeah, thumbs up. So this was a weird quirk I, I discovered while trying to wire it up, is that the power switch doesn't switch the 12 volt line. It only switches the AC line. You can see there's only there's only these wires. I think it's coming off the transformer that's going across those switches. Uh, and you can see there's, there's still connectors on one half that are just not used. And so I figured I'll just bridge the 12 volt um, positive across that. And then the, uh, even though I have it plugged in via that barrel jack, it can still, I can still use the power switch because previously uh, the power switch did nothing to it. It would just always stay on if it was plugged in. So had to suck some of the old solder out of that. You just saw me do that. Uh, and so I'm just, yeah, just soldering these, uh, these wires on. Yeah, just routing these uh, towards where that barrel jack is, uh, just over on the left side, top left of the machine. So pretty simple. I'm just going to bridge, uh, bridge the positive across that switch, and then the negative from the barrel jack will just go directly to the negative pin of the uh, that plug. And I guess uh, technically by doing this. Uh, if it's plugged in via that barrel jack, those two pins on the top will be at, you know, they'll have 12 volts across them. I don't think that's a big deal. It's not like it's the main lines that are exposed there. It's just 12 volt DC. But uh, that is, it is something to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, I'm just using uh, just using crimps to connect the wires. And that little trick there, I think it's uh, it's always a good idea to solder the wires before you crimp them, especially with the stranded wire here, because if you don't, the stranded wire will just get smashed and then it'll just tear out. Um, so yeah, pretty good, pretty good connection there. So that uh, red wire is going down to the switch and then just coming back up uh, and being attached to the positive on the uh, those two pins from the original plug. So let's see how it works. Plug it in, turn on that switch, and you can see the switch is now switching the uh, 12 volt line. So awesome, success. And now it is time to start cleaning the machine. Like I said earlier, it's not the most disgusting thing I've come across. It's it's definitely got some some grime, especially around these uh, the inside. So I think that's just this uh, like iron oxide powder. I think that's just from years of tape going across that just kind of um, turns into a powder. So I'm I'm using just isopropyl alcohol to try to clean that up. And it's I'm not going to get this to you know brand factory new look but just to clean up uh it in general and these these pinch rollers were just disgusting you can see how brown they are uh so a lot of a lot of dirt was uh, picked up off that and a lot of i think just that tape residue stuff as well so yeah already looks a lot better and again this is just isopropyl alcohol i think it's 99 percent and then to clean the it's not the pinch roller but the Capstan, I don't know what you would call it on a reel-to-reel. -reel. I just get in a piece of paper towel soaked in isopropyl, and then I'm just engaging the machine and just pinching it across. And it's, uh, yeah, it's making a pretty pretty brutal noise, but it does clean it. So you got to do it to the other side as well. This wheel is just as disgusting. Uh, and you can see the, the difference right there. And yeah, that, that paper towel picked up a lot of junk. And so you can see there how slowly that 
lever was disengaged. And it's kind of a problem because when the tape's flying across it and it releases, that that should really disengage immediately and not really slowly. Uh, because otherwise the tape is just whipping around as it's slowly turning itself off. So cleaned out the switch contacts. Uh, it wasn't really the switch's problem. So the uh, lever, yeah, just a tiny little e-clip there. Uh, got it off pretty easily though. So the lever has some old grease in it that's uh, kind of turned sticky and it's really, uh, you'll, you'll see that when I pull it out, it, it doesn't want to doesn't want to move. Yeah, some sticky old grease. So I'm just going to put some WD-40 in there. I don't know if that's necessarily the best thing for it, but it should be good enough. Um, just uh, just just so this pivot isn't so uh, lethargic when it's moving. And you can see how, how much better it is already. The uh, that uh, the very nice Omron switch is able to uh, really kick it out, so it just immediately shuts off when the the uh, there's no longer tape there. So cleaning up some of these uh, reel holders. Probably shouldn't use a paper towel because it left lots of little pieces of paper. Uh, on the wheels, so I had to clean it up with a cloth afterwards. And then just using some spray uh, white lithium grease on any of these sliding components. I really probably should get some better grease, not this spray stuff. I think it's more so designed for like a garage door because just it kind of goes everywhere. You can see I sprayed it all over the pinch roller, so I had to clean that up. Uh, and then this was something I didn't notice actually for till quite a while, and it's that the VU meters are stuck. They they're not they're not working. They should be resting at the little dark spot at the bottom. They should they should be at the the bottom of the meter when nothing's being played. So um, have to take these apart and figure out what's what's going on with these. And it definitely looks like someone's been here before because this is just all held down by really old cellophane tape. So yeah, I don't know if this is a common thing for these to break, but had to take old tape off in order to get to them because I, I doubt it would have came like this from the factory very nice so you can see uh, as I move these needles around they're, they're just staying in place there's no real spring to them I think there should be a little spring that's holding them down, and then it's when they get a voltage across that they'll 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 jump up, and then they'll be calibrated so that certain voltages or certain volume levels. So, just spooling on some some tape here to to see if these move at all when we're playing uh, when we're playing music through it. Nothing. Yeah, even kind of pushing around trying to help it, just not getting anything. So just putting a voltmeter across to, uh, across those pins, you can see it is getting a voltage, and it's the voltage is varying. Uh, probably an oscilloscope would be better to show this, but I don't have one, so. Yeah, it's just, you can see the voltage is changing. So there's something mechanically wrong with, with these VU meters, and they do come apart pretty easily. So what I found is that you, basically, it's pretty simple. You just take a soldering iron, and you melt that old Loctite that's holding this thing together. Uh, and sometimes that's enough to fix it. But then other times you need to use a little tiny slot head screw and undo that uh, screw bit to remove some of the downward force on it. Now I'm pretty sure doing this would mess with the factory calibration of these so they're no longer going to be like a good representation of the audio. Um, I'm probably not going to do tons of recording with this machine so that doesn't bother me as long as they're bouncing, they look cool, that's what I'm looking for. So that left one was pretty easy. Uh, this right one was was uh, was not. Uh, 
I could not get this screw to turn. It didn't matter how much heat. Like, I put a scary amount of heat into this VU meter with the soldering iron, and it just refused to turn. And I, I tried either direction, turning it uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, and I eventually did get it loosened, but that screw was destroyed in the process. You can see how messed up the top of that VU meter is after I got done with it, but... And yeah, this is a little, I just thought it was interesting how similar VU meters are to balance springs in a watch. Uh, you can see it's just the same concept. You have this coil spring, and then the coil spring is attached to this little, I don't remember what it's called, but it's a little arm that you can adjust it to change the timing on the mechanical watch. And you can do the same thing with a VU meter. So just an interesting connection there in, in terms of how those devices were designed. So, I've got to put this back together with some cellophane tape because it, it doesn't clip together anymore. And we can see it's it's bouncing a bit. The uh, left one, like I said, the left one was easy to fix. The right one was still pretty stuck. So, I took it apart again and messed around it with it uh, some more. Uh, just basically kind of bending it. Uh, and then, yeah, that, that got, it, got it moving. It's it's a little erratic there. <laughs> I, I wouldn't trust them to, to record something with, but they're they're moving. That's that's all you want, and yeah, it just it needs a little encouragement to get back to zero. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Alrighty, so it is now time to start cleaning. Good old four oh nine. And this thing really did clean up nice. It's all, all of this is just steel and aluminum. Uh, it's, this was before they had ever invented chromed plastic. So if you wanted chrome, you needed to, you needed to use chrome. And yeah, this, this is it's cleaned up just so well. And got to clean up the uh, faceplate. So that uh, that four parts uh, sticker turned out to not be true. There was basically nothing wrong with this machine. The biggest problem was the uh, the VU meters weren't working. But I don't think that would <laughs> make this thing entirely for parts. I, I honestly think the the reason it was classified as for parts is just because of that power cord. Because there there was no way to power this thing without that cord. Uh, and like I said, I looked online and I could not find it. And got to clean up the wooden box as well. And this really is a beautiful wooden box. And it cleaned up really well, really shined up. Yeah, you can see how, how dirty it was. It really didn't look that bad. And I don't know, maybe the 409's picking up a bit of the finish and stain on it. But I think it looks beautiful after cleaning. And finally got to clean up the faceplate, the uh, I.O. plate, whatever you want to call this. And this this was, this was pretty dusty because this was a, uh, this is on the top of the machine. So if it's, if it's sitting upwards, this is going to be collecting the vast majority of the dust. But yeah, again, it cleaned up well and got to clean up the kind of recording section. So this is where you can control the levels and either if you want to record on the uh, left channel or the right channel or both got some kind of arm hair in there i don't know don't know where that could have came from but yeah let's get that out of there and now it's time for the uh it's time for the final assembly so yeah we want to uh put the those metal chrome accent rings on next so like I had said when I was disassembling it, I, I learned that it's only that top screw that is actually fastened to the machine. These other ones uh, are just clamped uh, to the faceplate. So I got those on and fit the face back onto the machine.
very satisfying uh, sound to put these knobs back on. And I dare say this machine cleaned up beautifully. It is so much better than I thought it was going to be. It's, it really is a gorgeous machine. Uh, all of the chrome, all of the aluminum and, and wood. I mean, it just, stuff like this does not exist today. Uh, and with the, the fully mechanical controls, it is incredibly satisfying to use. So just, uh, just gotta put these long screws in the top and put the screws at the feet on it and it is good to go so just gotta put some reels on this thing and give it a, a real test finally and I will leave you with some music so I thank you for watching and have a nice day Thank <laughs> you.